Hi, Randy, K7AGE, with another Show Us Your Project video with projects that end by the Ham Nation viewers. We have a lot to cover. Let's get going. First up is a portable power box from Mike, AB0RR. He picked up this plastic box at his local container store, and it's built around a bio NO battery, their battery charger, and a solar panel. And he's added uh, some power pole connectors, a cigarette lighter connector, a voltmeter, and he says this will run his HF rig for three to five hours without any issues. Nice job. Greg, KO6TH, has a 2010 Tesla Roadster, one of only about 2,500 ever built. He wanted to mount a VHF, UHF mobile radio in the car, but the car only offers up to 8 amps through its accessory 12-volt uh, outlet. So he chose a Yesu FT818 and was able to mount it on the side of the console, and he uses a Larson through-the-glass mount dual-band antenna and Greg wanted to make as few modifications to the car as possible. Timmy OH7T, a Ham Nation viewer from Finland, is also building a portable power package, but he's spending the winter testing out various power pole, connector assemblies, charging systems, uh, wiring in his battery, and seeing that it's going to meet his demands. When he's happy with it and finish making modifications, he will then work on packaging it into a final case. Good idea. Johnny WJ0NF has built himself a heavy duty two and a half by eight foot workbench, starting with four by four inch posts, and the top surface is built out of five quarter inch tongue and groove pine covered with five eighth OSB board, which he says he can replace when it gets drilled, pond, burnt, and stained. On the walls, he uses a French cleat system, which allows him to move his shelves and adjust them as needed. He liked the bench so well, he built himself a second one. Well done, Johnny. Rich K9WWW picked up a used Alliance HD73 rotor. Looking at the manual to see how it comes apart, he decided to strip it down, clean it, and have all the parts powder coated. He said it wasn't very difficult. He took his time and took lots of pictures to make sure he could reassemble it back the way it was. It looks really nice now with all the powder coated pieces and he's looking forward to turning his new hex beam with it he says it operates quiet and smoothly gene n8yrf has started on a pine board project he's in the process of collecting parts he says he's had a couple of the tubes he tore apart a scope to get a tube socket and he's ordered some parts it looks like he's got his chip stick ready to go he's picked up his um Looks like pine boards from Hobby Lobby, and he's got them all stained and finished. So looking forward to seeing progress from Gene on his pine board transmitter. Charles KC9YNL says you can use expired license plates to make tool holders. He can bend them up, and he says bending the edges over will make them stronger and to make sure you file on the edges so you don't cut yourself. Add some stick-on rubber feet to keep it from sliding around and to protect your surfaces. The two-tiered holder will be for his pliers, cutters, and screwdrivers. He says small shielded boxes can be made from popcorn tins bought at Christmas time or old paint thinner cans. He says the corners solder very well. He also uses snap-in standoffs to hold the circuit boards and small rubber grommets or feed-through capacitors for wire egress. Lots of nice tips, Charles. Thanks. Ellen, K5ABL, has been working on a four-port directional coupler for an FM exciter application. This is his second-generation PC board, which he says doesn't work as good as his first prototype printed circuit board milled on a CNC machine. So he's learning a lot about layout and stray capacitance and such. So he provided me with a very extensive email talking about this. But if you're interested in it, you can contact him at his website. Gene, K4EKB, has been using what he calls a modest 3D printer along with Tinkercad software for various ham radio projects. He's building a go box, so he needed a bracket to hold a uh, voltmeter and a USB uh, charger 
uh, unit. So he printed one up. It has a nice little package. And if you're going to have a gold box, you probably have some fuses in there. So he printed up a nice little box to store spare fuses. It's pretty neat. He's also been busy printing push-to-talk handheld switches using arcade-style push-button switches of various sizes and shapes, including some desktop models where he's even printed in his call sign. And he's made some of these as uh, gifts for his ham radio friends. He's also printed up some simple little brackets for microphone holders. And he has a Yesu FTM 400, and when you remove the panel from it, it left the front of the radio kind of exposed, so he printed a dust cover. Really some neat 3D projects. Cool. Daryl W8DSB has sent along a club project from the from the Livingston County Amateur Radio Club. They've invested in a DMR repeater, and now to get the members on the air, they had a hotspot build project. So they built together 20 jumbo hotspots. So these are a few slides from the presentation with the steps involved to do uh, putting the hardware together, and then you program up the um, hotspot software that resides on a Raspberry Pi. And there's also quite a few steps to the Raspberry Pi to get it up and running as well. Then you get to configure the radio using the code plug CPS software. And again, you got to get all these fields in exactly right. So when you get all done, they had 20 new hotspots fired up for their members to get on their their new DMR repeater. So thanks, Daryl, for sharing. And our last project tonight comes from Joe, KD2PPY. Joe's 13 years old, a general class licensee, and he wanted to build an old school crystal radio based on designs from turn-of-the-century books. Uh, one of the challenges is a high-impedance headphone. He found that one. His grandfather had some copper wire to wind the coil, and he's just showing us a close-up here of the how small the wire was. And he had um, some resistors from an Arduino uh, kit of, of parts, and he talked to his teacher at school who had some of these old uh, clips, and he gave him some of those for the uh, radio. He, he uh, used a, a, a germanium diode. And uh, here he is winding the coil on a PVC form. It took him about an hour. He mounted it all onto a uh, pine board and has this adjustable uh, tuning piece of wire going across the coil. And uh, when he tried it out, he tied an antenna to the closet door and used a uh, garbage can for his ground. And it actually worked and picked up some static. And again, the designs from turn of the century, he did not use any modern things like YouTube to learn how to build this. He took it outside, connected it to a ground rod and a, and a wire, and was just amazed at how well it worked. And I know many of us spent many hours in our youth listening to crystal radios. Well done, Joe. Thanks for sharing. So that wraps up Show Us Your Projects for tonight. We had a lot of really neat projects. I really enjoyed the uh, bending up of the license plate, the club project of building hotspots, uh, Joe building his crystal radio, uh, the 3D printing, uh, power boxes, just a lot of good projects. So please uh, send in some photos and a description of what you've been building. Send it to me, Randy, and it's K7AGE at Outlook.com. So looking forward to seeing your projects. 73.